Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Last week I posted the first looks video of this Leonardo Affetina Italiana Furore Grande. It was only a first looks because I only had it for two days and was anxious to show it off. I also didn't have my regular sized Furore Salt with me as it was in the shop. Now I have the Furore back again and I've been writing with the Grande for a glorious week. So, I will look at comparing these two pens in detail right now. So, here are the two pens. Scale is an important thing in a two-dimensional medium like video and photography. And when you place these two pens next to each other, you immediately see how different they are. The real proof in the pudding is how they feel in the hand comparatively. So what I'd like to do today is look at the visual comparison between these two pens, looking at their relative parts and features, showing some size comparisons, put up some measurements of these two pens side by side, and then do some comparative writing samples. I'm going to call this the Furore and this the Grande from now on. Thanks to Salvatore, I have a number of nib options here. And to ensure we are comparing small apples to big apples as much as possible, I'm going to use the same ink, which is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Blue, and the same line thickness of nib. So let's just take a moment to admire the acrylic resins of both of these pens. As I said in the first look video of the Grande, this acrylic looks almost identical to the white salt version, but just a different color. The pearlescence and chatoyance of the swirls of these resins is spectacular. It is really breathtaking. The galaxy and amber acrylics of Pen BBS, like on these two 308s, comes close, but the acrylics from Leonardo are really stunning. It looks great on camera, but nowhere near like the experience of first hand. Of course, the obvious difference between the two pens is size, not only in girth, but in length. You see, the Grande isn't just slightly longer and thicker than the Ferrari. It is substantially longer and thicker. Is Lincoln's fresh new beauty, reflected in this new grill and hood ensemble, emphasizing its lower, wider, functional beauty. Even though, from a glance, they look like very similar pens, the writing experience is really different. These extra millimeters in girth and length make the pen feel very different in the hand. Let's start with posting. I know posting is a big deal for many writers. I'm okay writing with pens either posted or unposted, depending on how they feel unposted. Uh, but when a pen posts deeply and securely, and it doesn't unbalance the pen either way, it's a real plus for me. The Ferrore is exquisite in my hand, either posted or unposted. Longer writing sessions will have me writing unposted more often than not. But the fact that I can grab the pen and post it just to write a short note here and there without having to worry about the cap is a real plus. The Grande is a big pen. I can't tell you how marvelous it feels in the hand. I held Jack's Mont Blanc 149 in my hand last week and it has the same heft and feeling of being a substantial pen. It fills your hand and I love that. However, posted even though it does post securely, but posted, it's just, it's just too unwieldy. It doesn't significantly back weight the pen, but it just feels more like a baseball bat. That being said, I can write with this pen for hours without fatigue unposted. I don't consider this a signature pen. The way it fills your hand is comforting and secure. My handwriting actually improves with this pen and nib. Have you folks found that? It's really interesting. You can go from one pen to another in one writing session and your handwriting makes you go, ooh, look at me, or it just goes to shit. This Grande makes me go, ooh, look at me, even when there's no one around. Look at what I can do. Look what I can do. <laughs> what the hell was that? Now let's examine the sections and the nibs because this is where the rubber hits the road. When you look at them side by side, you can see that the Furore and the Grande sections are identical in length. 
Of course, the diameter is different by about a millimeter, but that one millimeter makes a big difference. It may seem small, but the hands are one of the most sensitive structures of the body, and the human touch can discern changes of fractions of a millimeter. Is that my arm? It doesn't feel like an arm. Then maybe you should let it go. Other than the diameter, there are only three other differences between these two pens. And I'm ignoring the color and markings on the nibs for this. The top of the Grande section has a stainless steel ring that protects the acrylic from ink staining and corrosion. The Grande's nib is bigger in length and width by small amounts, and the feed on the Grande is ebonite rather than plastic. And it's made in-house by Leonardo. And we line up the ring at the bottom of the sections. We see that other than the girth, the two pens are only different in the length of the nib and the end of the cap finial when posted. It should be noted as well that the difference between the Ferrore and the Momento Zero is not just in the shapes of the finials. The Ferrore is longer because those finials extend further. This is something Jack pointed out to me the other day and he's right. It does make for a different balance and feel, not just a visual difference. It is the same, I understand, between the Momento Zero Grande and the Ferrore Grande. I don't have a Momento Zero Grande to show you the difference, but the numbers are there. There are also functional differences between the Ferrore and the Grande. The Ferrore is a cartridge converter pen with a special screw-in converter that has a gold-plated extended knob that extends through the removable blind cap for access to that piston uh, without having to take the barrel off. Whereas the Grande is a piston filler with the blind cap twisting the piston mechanism. The Grande holds 1.5 milliliters of ink and the Ferrore holds about three quarters of a milliliter. The section of the Ferrore, of course, comes off to access that converter so you can check on your ink levels at a glance. There's no way to check the ink levels inside the Grande. The Ferrore's nib and feed collar assembly is easily unscrewed for removal and swapping or maintenance, whereas the Grande's nib is a friction fit and that uh, feed, I believe, is glued into that section. I might be wrong about that. If I am, please correct me, someone. But I'm not going to give that nib a twist to find out. In terms of weight, with both pens full of ink, we see the Ferrore comes in at 27 grams and the Grande at 30 grams. I'm surprised that the larger pen with the piston filling mechanism on board weighs just 3 grams more than the Ferrore. That's impressive. Consider that this Homo sapiens weighs 45 grams. Now let's look at some price comparisons because that is a factor. I'm using Applebaum's website for these prices. The Ferrare with a steel nib comes in at $171.66 US and $383.82 US with a 14 karat gold nib. The Grande with a steel nib is $284.49 US and $476.40 US with a 14 karat gold nib. That's a hefty price for the gold upgrade on the smaller pen. It more than doubles the price. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, here we are with the Ferrore Grande. And here it is with a Jinhao 159, just for grinners. A Visconti Homo Sapiens. A fully when 017 the Ferrore salt and the Momento Zero. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And actually the closest thing to the Ferrore Grande is the fully when 017. Interesting their girths so the sections are quite a bit different in shape, but uh, the whole size of the pen is uh, 
very interestingly similar. Now let's look at some comparison measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Leonardo Altacina Italiana Furore and it has a medium steel Bach nib. This nib was tuned by Jack Hernandez. And this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Furore Grande. And it has a medium steel nib and it is a Yovo. And this nib is directly out of the box. Nothing has been done to it. And the ink today is Leonardo Blue. I'm finding this ink to be almost identical to Hiroshizuku Kanpeki, which I really love a lot. And I love this ink a lot now, too. So that's the Yovo wetness. The wetness. Just slightly less wet on the Bach. And as to line variation, this is the Furore. No pressure. A little bit of push. It's a stiff nib. And the Grande, the Yovo nib, this is no pressure at all. That's a little bit of pressure. I would say they're the same. And as to line thickness, the Furore comes out and my Richard Binder chart at about uh, 0.5 five millimeters which is a western fine. The Grande comes out at around 0.4 millimeters which is a western extra fine. And for our quote this is the Grande Notice here that is like eight, not eight. And our quote for the Furore So, what do I like and what do I not like about these fountain pens? These pens are worthy of being at the top of anyone's Grail pen list. They are not $900 or $1,000 like other Italian pens from Bisconti, Montegrappa, or Peniter. They aren't even close to being considered inexpensive or even moderately expensive. But Leonardo has the base level pens, the Momento Zero and the Furore, with steel nibs at a price point that is obtainable where many of these other Grail pens are not by the average person. In my last review of Sean's uh, Pelican Ammo 205, there's been plenty of discussion about Pelican's price points uh, in the comments section. They have a significant gap between what is obtainable and out of reach for the average pen lover. Here are two pens with substantial size and beautiful finishes that are in that price gap. 
a big pen or an even bigger pen in a range that is obtainable as a grail pen for many. If you are saving or wanting to get a life event gift for someone, 175 bucks US isn't unreasonable for this work of art and this quality writing instrument. Plus, it has the backing of some excellent customer service. If purchased from a dealer like Applebaum, you will also get their excellent customer service and their nib tuning service, which is applied before you even receive the pen. Peace of mind. It is difficult to find negatives to say about these pens other than the prices of the gold nibs. These steel nibs, especially this new Yovo medium, write perfectly and I'd be hard pressed to spend the extra coin on the gold, especially when it doubles the price uh, for the Ferrore. If this grande were not given to me by Leonardo, I doubt I would buy it. I bought both the Memento Zero and the Ferrore with my own money. The grande isn't so large that I can't handle it or I don't love it because I do, but I doubt I'd pay this kind of money for the experience and the regular size pens do it for me completely. The only slightly negative thing I'd say about the Grande uh, is something a viewer commented on just recently. He said the clip uh, looked out of proportion to the rest of the pen and I immediately saw it when I looked. That's strange. All of a sudden I don't quite feel like myself. Oh, I feel all right. And yet I, I, uh... You know better than that. Now I can't unsee it. It isn't a deal breaker at all, but an interesting visual detail which makes sense. Everything else was increased in scale from the section to the nib, but not the clip. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote. I made this.